Um, hello guys, this video is motivated by a couple of comments and just overall falsehoods that I've been repeatedly seeing on the internet and on my channel. And I don't want to say that I'm butthurt uh, per precisely, but I am kind of butthurt. When I see this kind of falsehood being perpetrated on the internet, I am kind of butthurt. Low. So let's start with the comment, right? Let's start with the fact that geneticists claim back in 2012 that blondes were first discovered among the ancient North Eurasians. Oh, that's a crazy statement. Blondes were first discovered among the ancient. That's a. That's. Do you realize how bizarre of a statement that is? So these people who did not have any derived variants in Herc2, no derived variants in Oka2, no derived variants in even MC1R or even Keto G, even the Keto G mutation for light hair for light uh, skin, they did not even have this. But you're saying they had blonde hair. What? You're saying a pe upper Paleolithic population had blonde hair? Do you realize how bizarre that is? And uh, by the way, this is an upper Paleolithic population that's ancestral mostly to like Native Americans. Are Native Americans very blonde? You, you tell me, are they very blonde? Uh, but we're going to get into this a bit later. I'm going to talk about this later. Um, a significant part of EHG has ancestors from a and &E, AG3, Afontavagara 3. Yeah, in fact, the majority. And this person from Karelia does not even smell like a blonde. Then the color of the skin and eyes is also strange for me. Yes, you cannot even fathom that. A hunter-gatherer from the Mesolithic has uh, dark eyes and hair and, and skin. Yeah, it's crazy to imagine, right? No, not at all. Uh, but this is another link here from the Apricity Forum, which I'm I'm banned on the Apricity Forum. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, I get it around. I, <laughs> I'm banned there. But anyway, blonde hair originated from A and E, not from Western hunter-gatherers. Yes, of course, because Native Americans are so blonde and Northern Europeans are just so swarthy. So this is the blonde Kitoji variant. This is the variant that was found in Afonta Vagaran 3 back in like 2012. And the geneticists have been making a big fuss about it because it's especially David Reich. David Reich has been making a big fuss about it. This is the variant that increases the likelihood of blonde hair. But how much? How much does it increase the likelihood of blonde hair? Is it a particularly important variant? Is this enough to claim that ancient North Eurasians were blonde? Well, see for yourself. In this video, I'm going to show you a couple of studies, the results of a couple of studies that I found on GWAS Central, which stands for Genome-Wide Association Studies Central. And I'm just comparing this variant to some other of the variants featured in the studies. I'm only featuring the studies with the big number, uh, big numbers, like four Southern Europeans from the Netherlands, for example. That's a big number. And um, the odds ratio for this SNP in KETOG is 2.3. So compare that from... Uh, compare that with this SNP in SLC24A4, where the odds ratio is 2.5. So this variant, this really insignificant variant in SLC24A4, according to this study of 4,000 people, has higher odds ratio for blonde hair than this blonde Ketoji mutation. By the way, in case you are not familiar, in case you are just, you don't really, you're not a nerd like me and you haven't explored this into deep de details of this, SLC24A4 is a really, really insignificant gene when it comes to coloring. One of the most insignificant genes out of, out of the big ones, it is one of the most insignificant genes when it comes to coloring. And this variation in SLC24A4 has a higher odds ratio than this blonde Keto G variant that uh, apparently uh, proves that ancient North Eurasians were blonde right here. Okay, so this is the other, uh, another study. And here, this is the knockout here. I'm comparing it with actual HERC2. So let's go back right here. Uh, what does this person say? This person saying that blonde hair originated from ancient North Eurasians and not from Western hunter-gatherers. So what does this imply? This implies that this Kittle G variation is going to have a higher odds ratio because this is the variation that was first found in Afonta Vagaratri, right? It's going to have a higher odds ratio when it comes to hair color than the HERC2 variation, which was found in all of the pretty much all of the Western hunter-gatherers, right? So, but uh, that's not what we see here. That's not what we see here at all, because HERC2 has an odds ratio of 4.7 with this study of 30, oh my God, 300,000 people. I don't even know how they got this much people's genomes for this study, but whatever. Um, now, this variant in KETOG actually has an odds ratio of only 1.6 compared to HERC2's 4.7. So how much, how many times is it more significant? Is it, more, is it, um, is it three times more significant? I think it's three times more significant. So this HERC2... This HERC2 variation, this uh, blue eye variation, this is what we call the blue eye gene. This is blue, BEH2, blue eye haplotype 2, right? Uh, this is a blue eye gene. This blue eye gene is three times more significant when it comes to predicting hair color than this blonde Keto G variation. So um, let's scroll back here. Blonde hair originated from ancient Eurasians. Yeah, yeah, not at all. <laughs> not at all, boy. Not at all, boyo. Um, now let's move on to this study, right? 
And here I'm comparing it to both HERC2 and SLC45A2. Now, SLC45A2, once again, in case you don't know where uh, the light variations in these genes originate from, it is believed, according once again to David Reich, and I doubt David Reich here, that's why I'm doing my channel and I'm analyzing all these ancient genomes, because I really doubt most of the stuff that he says. Uh, but uh, according to David Reich himself, light or derived variants here came from Anatolian Neolithic farmers. Right, Anatolian Neolithic farmers. So let's compare the Keto G variant, the blonde ancient North Eurasian gene, compare the odds ratio here, 1.4, compared to the farmer gene, where odds ratio is 2.8. So literally, the farm. If you're saying that this ancient North Eurasians had this this uh, variation that lightens hair color, so why aren't you saying this about the fa the farmers? Because the farmers brought uh, derived variants in SLC forty five A two. This this also contributes to light hair color, and in fact, it contributes to light hair hair color much more than this uh, Keto G variant, much more. And uh, as you can see, Herc two once again, Herc two here also contributes much more to um, light hair than Keto G. Big difference here. Uh, by the way, look at the p-val difference. The p-val difference here is crazy. So you can't even say, you cannot even really say that this result for Keto G is significant because this is not a very significant p-val for a study that's um, 283,000 people. That's not a significant p-val at all for a study that's this big. Now, um, what's very interesting here is that a lot of people will insist that no, no, it is the blonde gene, and you cannot. And if you have this very, if you cannot have, you cannot have blonde hair without having this variation. You can have um, because people will say you can have uh, GG in in this variation in Herc two, and you're going to have blue eyes, but you're not going to have blonde hair. Well, guess what? Guess what? Only one percent of Estonians are homozygous for this var variant. Only one percent. So if that's the Hardy Weinberg formula, right? So the uh, the derived allele frequency for Estonians here is twelve point five percent. So you multiply 0 0.12 times 0 0.12, you get around 1% frequency of Estonians who are homozygous for this variant, for this blonde variant. So you tell me, are 1% of Estonians blonde or are like 75% of Estonians blonde? Which, which one is it? Is it the 1% of Estonians who are blonde or is it the 75%? You tell me. And um, actually, <laughs> what's funny, uh, Native Americans and uh, Hawaiians actually also have this variant. They also have this, they also have this variant. And in fact, at a higher frequency than Middle Eastern people. So you tell me, uh, you tell me, bro, who is blonder? Is it Native Hawaiians? Who is blonder, Native Hawaiians or people of the Middle East? Or you, once again, you tell me, who is blonder, Native Americans or Jews? Who's blonder? Who's whiter, Native Americans or Jews? I don't know, you, you, can, you can tell me, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let you think before you answer.